Panic Attack, winners of the Second Wars. You don't hold back him, do you? Because we saw you have a pop at Sir Killalot. Yeah, well, the, the thing behind that was uh, that when he was picking up the opposition and going to the pit, he was front heavy, so we thought maybe we could get behind him, and as he was dropping it, we could get him in there as well. That, that it was more. beautiful, great yeah. fun to watch. Now, obviously you haven't made that many changes, because you don't tend to do that, do you? You've got No, well, well, Smithy actually did dent the side, so we had to recover them. Battles. And what are your tactics for this battle? Uh, to get underneath him, pick him up, take him around the arena, maybe use him as a uh, protection against the other house robots and have a go at those. Right, <laughs> right, because he's a good tactician, that man. I won't tell you what his plans are, but you'll find out before long. Oh, right. <laughs> Talk me through this little fella here. Your robot is breeding. It was a little remote control car that I didn't play with, so my dad just stuck a shell on it and took it everywhere now. Ah, because you do all the school fakes and stuff, don't you? This robot gets around. And it's called Panic, not Panic Attack. Shouldn't put Attack on it. <laughs> From Grays in Essex and seeded number 10, Spawn of Scutter. Semi finalists in the last series as well. It has that pneumatic flipping piercing spike and run upside down on the four wheels. The two starter motors come from a saloon car. The shell is three millimeter polycarbonates. Well, this is the spawn team at the semi-final stage, as we always knew we would be. As you can see, the robots took a bit of a licking, but it's kept on ticking. First thing, Getrich in the second round gave us a few holes, but like any true Essex boy, we're hard as nails and we're ready for the rest of the competition. From Cumbran and seed number four, Panic Attack. Also semi-finalists in the last series, bulletproof fiberglass means no need to panic. Electric lifting forks mean plenty of attack. 80.6 kilos means this is the joint heaviest here. Hi, this is Panic Attack. I'm Michael. This is Christian. This is Daddy. Hello. We're back now from the, the last battle we had. We had to do a few repairs after Smitty damaged all the sides. We've changed all the stickers, we've beaten out the panels, and we've changed the wheels, and we are now fully ready for our next battle. Roboteers, stand by. Those hard Essex lads with spawn of scutter. That's Luke Jackman in the middle at the controls and Panic Attack from Wales. Kim Davis at the controls, Robot Wars Better. The much fated Panic Attack moves up rather nervously. Spawn of Scutter backing on it would seem, a little bit of a piggyback. Lifted up by those electric lifting forks of Panic Attack. In this series, they have those additional skirts on the side. You see them there, the yellow and black striped skirts for extra protection. Driving Spawn of Scutter into the CPZ so that Shunt can have a little go with the axe. Spawn of Scutter, quick to respond, though, gets away. That's the full frontal collision there, head-on against Panic Attack. Just saw the little pneumatic flipping spike coming out there at the front of Spawn of Scutter. Again, Panic Attack driving on towards the arena wall. Good start here by Panic Attack. And if they can get in underneath now, they can actually flip Spawn of Scutter up and out of the arena. Can they get enough purchase there on Spawn of Scutter? And can Scutter right itself? It has no true stream itself. Running mechanism. And look at the house robots all waiting to respond and come in. They're poised like vultures to come in for the kill. Look at them. They're all there. Kill a lot. Dead metal and Sergeant Bash and Shunt. Predators to pick up the pieces of the carnage of this Robot War semi-final battle. It's all over for Spawn of Scutter. They've been immobilised too long. They couldn't get enough purchase on the arena floor despite the spike front wheels brought in. They were slammed against the arena sidewalls. They couldn't right themselves. And now, of course, they are at the mercy of our house robots. There's the sergeant. A lick of flame will do quite nicely. Thank you very much for the Scutter boys, hard as nails and twice as easy to hammer. And look at Panic Attack, taking on the house robots, taking on Shut and Killalot, didn't like it at all, there's Dead Metal meanwhile back on Spawn of Scutter. The pit of gloom and doom and oblivion descends, that's where we're going to send Spawn of Scutter, but where will Panic Attack send the house robots? Gripped on to Shunt. This is Bash, of course. Now, what is that coming out of Killalot? We heard earlier on that Killalot loves to take a leak here and there, and that's what's happening on the arena floor, I'm afraid. Spewing out some sort of fluid all over the place. Spawn of Scutter will say goodbye 
to their competition hopes. Great battle. But I'm more worried about my pal Killer Lot, I must admit. Get some sort of Robot Wars medic down there. Sort out my hero. Spawn and Scutter just not strong enough. Panic attack go through. Well, Spawn of Scutter, the initials are SOS. <laughs> and you needed some help there, didn't you? Yeah, like, yeah we did. <laughs> Talk me through that. What went wrong? Well, we just couldn't get underneath him. As soon as we couldn't get underneath him, that was it. Kept getting underneath us, picking us up, and that was it. Yeah. Came over. He's a strong robot, isn't he? He's is good. Robot. He's an ex-champion as well. Ex-champion, all the experience. Proven roboteer. A proven roboteer. I was going to say, well, how do you, how do you, how do you feel when um, you're drawn against a robot you, like you Panic go Attack? Out to a nicer guy. Yep. That's yep. it. Yep. <laughs> We're getting excellent future winners. That's it. <laughs> that's the lads. Okay, let's hear it for Spawn of Scutter. <laughs> they said you were a nice man. I think you'd a bit of a bully, mate. Oh, no. He was getting stuck no. in there, though, wasn't he? Oh, I tried to get Chunt off him, and look what happened to us. I know, yeah, <laughs> you, you keep tangling with the house robots as well. Well, you know? Chunt was putting his axe in, so I thought, well, I'll help him out a bit. Mm, a bit of damage. And... You know, that could all end in tears, don't you? I know. You know <laughs> you're through to the next round. You feeling confident? How are you feeling today? Fine. Feeling good? Yeah. Feeling strong? Yeah. But you're going to make it? Probably. You've got a good chance this year. You want to lift that trophy again, don't you? Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for the Panic Attack team! <laughs> Panic Attack looking good again. Spawn and Scutter falls away. Next up, the hugely powerful Hypno Disc against the underdogs. Splinter. They came second in the last wars. They're the most awesome, destructive robot we have seen on Robot Wars. It's Hypno Disc and the Rose family. This, in the last wars, travelled at 500 RPM, it's now 750, and it gets there in half the time. They have the self-rising mechanism that everybody wondered if they'd have. They've got it. They've got everything, we think. Did you take any damage in the heats at all? Uh, very minor damage, uh, nothing really to speak of. Uh -huh, confident. And what's your salute, your war cry? War cry is when we win, we do this. Into win. Into win. And if you lose? Well, we, in haven't, we haven't done that yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen really, is it? Well, it's the Splinter team who probably have the least favourable draw. How are you feeling about it? Yeah, a little bit worrying getting picked to fight against Hypnodisc, but um, we'll see how we go. I now, think... that looks quite flimsy. Is that a good thing, perhaps? Yeah, I think it probably is. At least it'll give. If the uh, disc come round, it won't rip it off. Hopefully it'll just push it out of the way. Now, what are you made of? Because that's always pretty key when it comes to Hypnodisc. Yes, it's an uh, aluminium checker plate. Not very uh, strong against his disc, but we have got a good air gap all the way around. So it's going to be a bit of space before yeah, we get to anything right. crucial, so you'll keep moving, we hope. Yep, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk tactics. Craig, you're the driver. Yeah. Um, at right at the beginning, we're just going to charge straight at them and then hopefully do lots of spinning, and if we go the same way as their disc's going, they should hopefully brush off rather than cut for us. And you're going to make that original charge yeah. because it takes some time to get rev revving, doesn't it? Yeah. Straight at them and then push them into the house robots. Hopefully, yeah. Uh, and then down the pit. We shall see. From Banbury and seated number two, Hypno Disc. Finalists in the last series and improved with the Shremek, more powerful motors, weaponry which spins at 750 RPM and hits you effectively at 75 miles an hour. Hello, we're Team Hypno Disc. We're through to the series semi final. We've wiped away all four competitors so far. We've made a number of uh, modifications on our way. One is to improve the traction on the front wheels, and the second is to weld the teeth on, so there shouldn't be any limit to the destruction on the way. Rob Norwich, Splinter. A father and son team who fought in the second series, back with a completely changed robot, wheelchair motor power, a crusher scooper, a welded steel frame. It's the charge of the Splinter Brigade. This is our robot Splinter. We just finished beating Kilohertz and Eric, and now we're back for action. Yeah, unfortunately, we've been uh, drawn to fight against Hypnodisc, which is a bit worrying as it's quite destructive. But um, we just keep moving around, or rather, Craig will, because he's driving. I'm only allowed to operate the arms. So uh, we just see how we get on. Roboteers, stand by. Hypnodisc, awesome with the Rose family, twin brothers Dave and Derek, and dad Ken, a retired engineer, and there's Splinter. 
with Stuart Waitman, dad, and 15 year old Craig. Three, two, one. Craig's plan just runs straight ahead of this. He's utterly balmy, or is he? Was that a worthwhile tactic? That certainly isn't. He's done all the hard work, charged the hypnotist, got away, and then ran straight at the arena wall. Back again, what a brave effort this is from Splinter. Drive straight on. Could this be one of the biggest shocks ever in Robot Wars? It's certainly a valiant effort so far from Splinter. If they keep attacking on a frontal collision with that disc, they'll protect their more vulnerable sides, of course, Splinter. And maybe, who knows? Oh, no, they won't! There, there goes the scoop of the front.